The movie begins in ancient Rome. An architect by the name of Lucius is struggling with financial problems as he is unable to invent fresh ideas. Even though he keeps coming up with new ideas, customers always say no to his innovations. One afternoon, Lucius's friend takes him to a public bathhouse so that he can relax a bit. But Lucius doesn't like the place because of all the rowdy, nude people. He feels it's the worst spot to unwind. He dives underwater to get away from the crowd and noise. Out of nowhere, he sees a tiny vortex developing on the opposite side of the bathtub. As he tries to inspect it, he is sucked into that vortex. Lucius finds himself in a tunnel-like place as he struggles to breathe. After much effort, he manages to reach the surface. Surprisingly, though, he is no longer at the same Roman bathhouse. The architect has managed to time travel to Japan in the present day. His audience consists entirely of elderly men who are taken aback by his nudity as he stands naked before them. For some reason, Lucius thinks that the men are from a flat-faced tribe because he has never seen anyone with Mongolian features. Once Lucius gets over his initial shock, he realizes that this bathhouse is much ahead of its time. The baskets, taps, and massaging device blow his mind as he regrets not thinking of these innovations earlier. Accidentally, he goes into the ladies' changing room and gets punched and knocked out by a screaming elderly woman. Next, we are introduced to Mami, a manga artist who is having a hard time making ends meet. His presence inspires her to create a new character, so she begins to sketch him. A while later, Lucius wakes up and is given a bottle of flavored milk. He is yet again baffled by the sweet and cold taste of it. Indeed, it is so effective that it knocks him out for a second time. When he wakes up, he finds himself back in Rome, in the same bathhouse. The authorities say that he was just found a few minutes after he got drowned in a tub. At first, Lucius dismisses his experience with the flat-faced people as a dream. However, his perspective changes when he spots the empty milk bottle by his side. The scene cuts to two months later. Lucius proposed his renovation idea to the owner of the bathhouse and makes it more advanced. People think he's very creative, and it's making him a lot of money. Modern bathhouse amenities include massage booths, sweet milk, and baskets to enhance their bathhouse experience. As he soaks in the tub, an elderly guy longs for the days of his own personal bathhouse. As Lucius is thinking of a way to make it possible, he is again pulled by a current and brought to a bathtub in the 21st century. When a man enters, he begs Lucius to help him take a shower. Lucius is confused but he does as told and finds out about many more useful tools like a shower head and a shower hat. Coincidentally, the house belongs to Mommy who finds Lucius on the floor. After she dashes to retrieve her sketchbook, he is no longer in sight. Lucius builds the elderly guy a bathtub for his home in Rome and ends up making a tidy sum as a result. Now that he has enough, he can feed his wife well, but she still isn't happy. She begs Lucius to stop working so that she can have a kid, and he refuses. After an altercation, she storms away after cursing him. After some time has passed, an emissary of Emperor Hadianus approaches Lucius. Rumor has it that he assassinated his opponents in the cabinet, adding to the man's reputation for brutality. The emperor has taken an interest in Lucius as news of his innovations has spread throughout the city. He admits to being an art lover upon first meeting Lucius, and he sees the public baths as an expression of Lucius's artistic vision. After seeing his efforts, the emperor requests that he construct a private bath for himself. His expectations are that it will be completely novel, unconventional, and unmatched. The challenge is taken up by Lucius, who sets out to impress the emperor. He spends the whole night scouring the town in search of ideas for a magnificent bathhouse, but he comes up empty-handed. The fact that all of his ideas are plagiarized and do not deserve credit makes him feel ashamed. Out of nowhere, he plummets into a ditch and vanishes. In the next scene from current time, Mommy is seen working at a bathroom supplies store. Since her manga artist career is floundering, she has taken a second job. However, she still has trouble staying awake at work. One afternoon, she accidentally leaves the water open and fills a tub to its brim. Suddenly, Lucius appears in the tub and starts breathing frantically. He stops when he realizes the tub is bubbling on its own. The manager of the shop goes to complain about the strange man, giving Mommy and Lucius time to socialize. After giving her a quarter, Lucius presses her to show him about the area. Mommy guides him around even though she doesn't comprehend the language. Enchanted by the urinals, Lucius assumes that printed toilet papers hold the keys to the flat face tribe's prosperity. However, a bidet is the object that captivates him the greatest. He experiences ecstasy like nowhere else while using it. After taking copious notes, he flies back to Rome and builds the imperial family the most luxurious bathhouse ever. It features a backwashing toilet that uses a steady flow of water, a bubble bath that is created by slaves blowing up a pipe, an illuminated aquarium, and fragrant candles. He gets a unique necklace with a sculpture of dog legs and human genitalia because he goes above and beyond what the emperor expects. Upon returning home to share the accomplishment with his wife, Lucius discovers her in the company of his best friend. Mommy goes back to her little hometown in the future after being fired from her side jobs and failing miserably at coming up with manga ideas. While pursuing her interest in Roman history, she takes a job at a nearby bathhouse. 
She is curious as to whether Lucius is a real historical figure because of the coin he gave her and his disappearance. After his wife absconded with his best friend, Lucius returned to Rome and feels a complete loss of motivation to live. A messenger, concerned about the monarch, approaches him one day. A crocodile appears to be the reincarnation of the recently deceased son of the monarch. All of his demands will be satisfied if Lucius can just figure out where to keep the crocodile. Because he would be held fully responsible and branded a national criminal if the animal were to die, Lucius must exercise extreme caution with this one. After that, as per the emperor's request, Lucius visits the bathhouse to inspect the water flow. But for the third time, he is dragged into the future as soon as he gets in the tub. When he steps outside, he sees a cage full with crocodiles. His current location is actually a sanctuary for crocodiles. At the same time, Mommy is also at the sanctuary with a date who she doesn't like. She tries her best to get rid of the guy and is happy upon seeing Lucius inside the cage. She forgets about her date and drags him out to show him about the sanctuary. After researching crocodiles in their ideal habitat, Lucius gets the hang of it. Mommy also takes him to learn archery to see if he is really a Roman man. He hits all the targets, confirming her suspicion. He eventually finds himself in a hot spring, which transports him to his own time. The emperor finds an ideal location to breed his crocodile offspring a few months down the road. He has begun to extend frequent invitations to the palace and treats Lucius as if he were a member of his family. There is complete calm in the city until the emperor learns that rebels are attacking his army. They will stop at nothing to remove him from power because they are unhappy with his rule. The rebels and the imperial army engage in a brutal conflict that lasts for over a year. The emperor has reached retirement age and is prepared to step down. He intends for his nephew Sionius to succeed to the throne. In an effort to win over the populace, Sionius plans to construct a new bathhouse as his inaugural project as emperor. Which is why the emperor is requesting Lucius's assistance to his nephew with the undertaking. Lucius has a dilemma here since Sionius is arrogant and prideful, and his values are at odds with his. Lucius knows that if he becomes the emperor, the fall of the Roman Empire is inevitable. So, he visits Sionius and flat out refuses to work for him after considerable deliberation. Sionius warns Lucius that betraying the emperor is a capital offense, but Lucius insists on continuing nevertheless. He then urges another architect to take on the project. Nonetheless, the man is enraged with Lucius because Lucius is responsible for his bad financial situation. As a result of their altercation, Lucius is shoved into a well. In the next scene, he is with the flat face tribe again. He is hurt and they are treating him with the utmost care. They transport him to a healing hot spring so he may relax and get well. The water of a spring is believed to have curative properties and can speed up the healing process. They also give him fermented alcohol which burns his throat. Then, Lucius meets Mommy who has learned to speak basic Latin. She asks him his name but Lucius is so drunk that he falls on top of her and the two drown in the lake. When they wake up, they are in Rome, much to Mommy's amazement. It is revealed to her that Lucius is on the verge of being beheaded for defying the Emperor's decree. She tries to persuade him to accept the project out of concern, but he declines. To escape certain death, Lucius packs his bags and runs away from home. As they plummet into the water, the elderly men in Japan are desperately searching for mommy. They too are transported to a bygone era as they become entangled in a whirlpool, just like Lucius. While traveling to a different city, Lucius stumbles upon a hilltop natural hot spring. Reflecting on his treatment by the indifferent tribes, he comes to the realization that the spring could be of use to the injured warriors serving under the emperor. He rushes to mommy to tell her of his idea which she agrees with. Following that, Lucius goes to the emperor and presents him with the vision. He also claims that he was instructed by Antonius to make the spring. In comparison to Sionius, Antonius is a far better qualified candidate for the role of king. Hence, Lucius wants him to look better in the emperor's eyes. The flat-faced tribe, including Lucius and Mommy, set out to construct the spring after receiving permission to do so. They have a few hours to construct the first hut. Soldiers begin to congregate around the spring as a place to rest as more and more homes are constructed in the area. Members of the tribe tend to the injured and ensure their speedy recovery. They also use their knowledge of modern medicine to do so. The troops finally crush the insurgents a few months down the road. They celebrate by drinking and dancing. Lucius and Mommy sit in private and chat for a long time. As a result of their time spent working together, they've grown to care about one another. Mommy also starts vanishing in front of his eyes but before she does, he tells her that there are several ways leading to Rome. Antonius becomes the emperor's advisor in the scenario that follows. In front of onlookers, Lucius is also presented with an award for his valor throughout the conflict. Everyone agrees that they would never have one without him. Meanwhile, Mommy has started a new life in the future. One day, she is walking down the city, when she sees Lucius come out of a pond. Their reunion serves as the film's climax. Subscribe for more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.